Blah, blah, blah. Blah. All right, welcome to Dive Vibe. I'm Zach, I'm a technical diving instructor, and today we're gonna be checking out a video called Scuba Dive Gone Wrong. I had, my cat was back here. I thought it would look cool in the background, but something, something pissed my cat off. Another one. Cat cam. All right, so before we start this video, I just wanted to say, so first of all, nobody dies in this video, which isn't always a given on this channel, as you know, uh, if you watch my videos, but the people in it made some, some pretty, you know, they didn't make a, they made a lot of bad decisions in this video. It is, uh, absolutely hilarious only because people didn't die and only because I've definitely you know we all make mistakes right we've all made our mistakes early in our dive career if you don't remember when you made mistakes in diving or sucked as a diver then you probably wouldn't make a very good instructor because how can you teach people to be good if you were already good you don't know you don't know how to get good <laughs> anyway uh, so the person in this video has been very humble in the comments on their video saying that you know they keep it up because they want they keep the video up even though it's embarrassing for them because they want future divers to take note and not make the same mistake which i think is is great use it as a as a training tool and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to try to use this as a training tool see what went wrong see what went well and uh he's i like this guy he's been pretty humble so if this is your video yes i'm gonna make fun of you but i don't mean it because i've been there before it's all just it's all just for fun. Okay, well, it's a really long video, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm gonna skip around just a little bit, but man, towards the middle of the video, it gets to be gold, so let's, let's, let's give it a shot. So I think they're in the um, St. Lawrence, St. Lawrence River or St. Lawrence Seaway, whatever you call it, I'm not sure, uh, and they're diving a wreck. It's supposed to be at 65 feet. Uh, it, it is current. Anyway, we'll play the video. We can figure it out together along the way. All right, drop it in. This ability looks good for freshwater. Unless you're talking about a cave. That's some real good biz. It's okay for now. It's a good idea. Oh, he's filming himself. <laughs> you have fun, bud? Hey, look, uh, it's a good idea to follow a line down when you're in low visibility so you know you end up where you were supposed to be. But uh, this guy's like literally pulling himself down. He might be a little bit underweighted or maybe he doesn't know how to get all the air out of his BCD, which is pretty common amongst newer divers. Just pull himself. You can see the bottom. The bottom's coming. I think they're only going to 55 feet too, so if you can't see the bottom from the surface at 55 feet, not the best fizz, but I've dove in worse. Kind of frequently, actually. <laughs> I already want to do this dive. This looks like fun. But man, look at that line. That thing is like 45 degree angle. It's getting taut. It's experiencing difficulty due to his weight belt shifting and is taking on water in his mass. Uh oh. <laughs> So he's going down. Why would why would his weight belt come loose? Well, he's probably wearing a nice thick wetsuit, and now he's getting close to the bottom. So his wetsuit's compressing from the pressure. That's why uh, free divers use rubber weight belts because you can get them really tight, and then they kind of move with you. Honestly, I really like the rubber weight belts. I don't know why more scuba divers that prefer to use a weight belt. Not too much of that anymore. But divers that prefer to use a weight belt. I don't know why they haven't switched to the rubber weight belt. I think they're they're superior. Maybe there's a reason. Alright, cool. Standing on the bottom. Not my favorite thing. But this guy is... He's having some issues right now. Alright, this is why your camera... Especially if you're a newer diver. Why your camera... <laughs> why your camera should always have a clip on it. Buoyancy first, my friends. Buoyancy first before the camera. You need perfect buoyancy and then you can add in the camera. If you can't control your buoyancy without a camera, you definitely can't control it with. So you gotta clip that thing off, be comfortable, and then maybe use it. And if stuff starts to get hairy again, uh, put it back. But we've all been there. My favorite, my favorite, you know, when I when I 
used to guide the mana ray night dive all the time you get a lot of divers that are told in the mainland that there's an easy dive no problem you can do it and it is an easy dive but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be in control of your body <laughs> so these people get down there and they've got their gopro and they get over to the campfire which is a big thing of lights that we use uh, to kind of centralize the mana rays and they're <laughs> not even able to control their buoyancy they're hanging on with like one hand on a rock trying not to f uh, float towards the surface and they got their camera in the other hand and but dang it they're getting that shot they're getting so i had pre-written in sharpie on a slate and i'd go over and show it to it says buoyancy first camera second and then i'd just kind of reach over and deflate their bcd put them down but hold on to this rock <laughs> what have you got to do uh, just so everybody knows when you're doing the manta ray night dive and we never want to touch the bottom kind of a you know not the greatest thing but we do select a really good area for it which really just sand and rocks but if you want to be mad at that you go right ahead that's fine all right let's get back to the video all right so he's got a normal nylon weight belt so that's why he's going to need to tighten that probably or just deal with it if you're like me, my hips don't lie. I don't gotta worry about it slipping off. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> of course, I don't really use a, a weight belt much. Good tool though if you need to add a lot of weight for a dry suit. Not the worst idea to spread your weight out. Oh, this is this is sad. So what he's crawling on right now, I'm fairly certain that those are zebra mussels. Pretty sure he's about to say they're zebra mussels. If you enjoy any kind of freshwater recreation in the mainland you need to be very aware yep you need to be very aware of these zebra mussels because they're starting to spread to the mainland we're getting them in texas and in, in the lakes i used to dive apparently lake travis is just covered in these things now they're highly invasive and they get there by you know basically being on other people's boats or gear or whatever they put in the water and they go from one uh lake or river or something like that to another and then they contaminate it it is bad, bad stuff. Ask anybody that dives Dutch Springs. They are prolific in there. All right, so that's gotta be sharp. Climbing over the rocks, or climbing over the zero muscles. Barehanded. Look at this guy is working so hard. Is this a dive or is this like CrossFit? What are they? I don't get it. Oh. Definitely newer divers, but you know what? We were all newer divers once. Alright, cool. So I'm assuming they descend on that mooring line, and then somebody has put a line between the mooring and the wreck that they're headed towards. Uh, let me know if you see I didn't see a computer anywhere in this video and this just looks like a you know depth gauge compass uh, submersible pressure gauge or your air gauge kind of set up so I always hear people tell me they're like oh no I dive tables and we're about to get in the water I was like cool why don't you get your tables and we'll plan your dive and they say oh I didn't bring them with me and I'm like oh so you're not diving tables. Well, that's okay. I brought tables. <laughs> we have them glued to our boat just for that situation. The buddy's on the other side of the wreck. It's a cool wreck, man. I want to do this dive. This looks like fun. All right. At least they're not wearing split fins. Oh, are those, are those split fins? I don't think so. Hard to tell. What's up, buddy? Get a little selfie action? French-Canadian team can be seen diving below. Oh, no, look at the... Oh, they got pretty good trim and buoyancy. No, don't leave. Take me with you. Don't make me go with these people. Take me with you. Oh, split fins! No! Ugh! Gross! Okay. Fend in to stay off the bottom. Our buoyancy control is not there yet. So, the decision has been made for a deep dive. Okay. So, I'm sure that you've got, you got two plans going. You've got a 
a plan where you went to 60 feet or 70 feet, and you've got a plan for when you went to 100 feet, right? Mm, something about this leads me to believe that maybe there wasn't that much planning involved. Plan your dive. Dive your plan. Unless you're rebreather diving, then you can do whatever you want. Just kidding. Oh my god, what is going on? Okay, so... It says in the video that the current's pushing them down, which is very possible. I, I mean, pretty sure this is... It's a river, right? I don't do... The rivers that I've dove in didn't have a lot of depth changes, so I don't know if it kind of pushes you down. Let me know in the comments if you dive rivers what this is like. Or if you have dove here, that'd be even better. Give us some insight on what's going on, maybe. Alright, they're not... They're not happy. This is definitely... We're instantly regretting our decision to descend to 100 feet. Oh, man. McDonald is getting nervous and narcolepsy is setting in. So, I don't mean to make fun of him. He does, he does cover it in his video, but it's not narcolepsy. Nobody's falling asleep. It's narcosis. And at 100 feet, working this hard, the narcosis is going to be pumping. Inert gas narcosis. You know, you breathe so much of it, it makes you a little loopy. You know, the, the the martini effect. The deep daiquiri. Narcolepsy sit, sit, setting in. They're going to sleep any minute. God, I love this video so much. They're having such a rough time. It's only funny... Spoilers. It's only funny because they survive. Nobody gets bent or anything like that. Because you might you might be thinking, how could the thousand psi? That ain't looking good. Now at 110 feet. Wow, that's really deep for a rookie. Especially in these adverse conditions. Man, he's breathing so hard. So if he had trouble descending in the beginning, that's going on with my hair. Oh my god. Has I been like that the whole time? So if he had trouble descending in the beginning... Oh no, he ascends at 120 feet per minute, so that's... Depending on who you ask, it's either 30 feet per minute, 60 feet per minute for ascent rate. Even if you're considering it, just go with 30 feet per minute. I like a nice slow ascent. Four times the speed. I'm not sure how he knows that. He doesn't have a dive computer. Oh, maybe he knew the depth and then took, measured how long it took. That makes sense. Yeah, there's an additional fear of boats overhead. A lot of people don't think about that. You don't always want to ascend just willy-nilly if you can avoid it. And that's why... Delayed surface marker buoys are so popular because you can send something up ahead of yourself. Not not popular, important. Get one. If you're a diver and you don't have one, get one. Even if you don't have your own gear, I'll say all you got is mask and fins. Get a DSMB. You need it. You can't rely on the dive guide to be with you the whole time. This guy doesn't even have a have a guide. It seems like. Now he's concerned for his buddy. Oh, this is the worst when you're looking for your. Looking for your dive buddy, and you're worried. I kind of decided that I don't like that feeling, so I do my utmost to make sure that this crap doesn't happen anymore. Oh. Poor guys. Man. Had a rough dive. Um, more training needed. More training needed. More practice. Hmm. I wonder how much more action we've gotten here. Huh? <laughs> bah! Huh? Bah! Are you okay? Oh, thank, thank goodness. I'm glad they're okay. You know, as silly as these videos are sometimes, I don't ever want any of these people to get hurt. <laughs> It's always a relief when they're fine <laughs> at the end of the video. Paul! He lost his flipper! He lost his flipper! Oh, God. You okay? 
You're gonna mean to tell me every other infantryman's got fins and you got flippers. Oh uh, look. Okay, the laughter. They are very aware that they've made a boo-boo. They've been punished enough. Guys in the comments, please don't rip on them too hard. They got torn a new one on this video. You should, the link to this video is in the description if you want to check out those comments. They got ripped on pretty good. I was pretty mild compared to what other people were saying. Oh, so he's saying they got caught up and pulled down. Uh, but you typed in the thing that the decision was made to hit 100 feet, not set a good, record. <laughs> How was the dive? Not good. It was scary. <laughs> Lost a fin. Man, we oh, now it's a fin. Here come the pontoon boat. I'm really envious of people that can get away with using pontoon boats as dive boats. It's a super, like, nice platform for it. Lots of deck space. Very, uh, we used to dive off one in Lake Travis in Austin, Texas, and that was uh, called the Giant Stride. That was just really fun. You know, not not great viz, but you'd go look for like drop sunglasses and stuff around the party party barge island. It was, it was it was cool. Anyway, back to the video. So what went well? I'm just gonna do what went well first because it's it's the shorter part of the list. Um, they sort of stayed together as buddies they did for the most part they were trying to you really want to tighten that up guys especially when you're newer you know what scratch that tighten it up regardless of whether you're new or not stay closer to your buddy because how far do you want your buddy away from you um about as far as you'd want them to be away from you if you're completely out of air and i don't mean you just took a breath and then you run out of air because that's norm not normally the way it happens normally you go to take a breath and there's nothing which immediately gives you just a little jolt to that old panic. So you want your buddy to be right next to you, so you can just reach over and go, ah, please help me, <laughs> right? Slap them, get their attention. Um, so, uh, they, what else went well? They survived, that was a, a real deep, you know, I'll save the bad stuff, they survived. That, that, was, that was good. Um, all right, what didn't go well? So, they had to pull themselves down. I'm gonna go ahead and give that to them just because, you know, sometimes the current can be bad and it can make it really difficult to descend and stay on. So they might've just been pulling themselves towards the thing. So I'll leave, I'll leave that alone. Um, but I just really just got a feeling that they didn't have enough weight. Uh, the biggest problem for me, they probably would have been relatively fine had they actually done the dive they planned and not made a decision to go to 100 feet which led to them going even deeper than that not sure what their depth maxed out at you know they didn't they they didn't need to do that they were just somebody was trying to set a depth record maybe maybe not they just wanted to go deep i get it man i get the the urge to want to go deep i want to go deep that's my sh that's my stuff <laughs> That's my stuff right there. I love going going deep. But you know what? I have done tons and tons of training and little incrementally deeper dives to get used to it, right? It's it's not something that you just want to rush into. I said this, I've said this quite a lot, but the ocean does not care who you are. It doesn't care who's counting on you or relying on you. It doesn't care, you know, if you're a teacher, a cop, uh, anything. The ocean will straight up take your life. And the, and the river or lake too. You get what I mean, the water. It's, you need to take this stuff seriously, okay? If anybody uh, is cautioned or rethinks a dive they might've been planning or not planning uh, because of this video, then that's great. And we can be uh, thankful to our, our friends over here. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for stopping by. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Or if you learned something, hit the like button. That helps me out a ton. So I really appreciate that. If you want to see more stuff like this, then subscribe and make sure you click the little bell notification so you get to know uh, when I release a new video. If you want to be more part of the community, you can support my work on Patreon for five bucks a month, gets you access to some more educational type videos, or you could buy one of my t-shirts. All that stuff is down in the description. You can check that out. And thanks for diving with me today, and I'll see you in the water.